Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's episode of Magnificent Math with Mrs. Murray. Bum, ba, da, bum. Today, we're going to be looking at 6.4, which is rational equations. So, this time we're going to have an equal sign somewhere in there and some variable, and we are going to need to solve for the given variable. In order to do that, what we have to do is multiply both sides of the equation by a binomial that allows you to cancel out denominators. Okay, the key to this section is going to be eliminating the denominators. Okay, you have to remember that. Then what we're going to do is compare the answers to the non-permissible values to make sure that they aren't extraneous. Then we're going to check our answers. Okay, so we're going to kind of be tying in everything that we've done in the last couple chapters into this chapter. So our first example, 9 minus y over, sorry, 9 over y minus 3 minus 4 over y minus 6 equals 18 over y squared minus 9y plus 18. What we're going to do is it tells us to solve for the variable. So we need to solve for the variable. In order to do that, first thing that we're going to have to do is factor this denominator. Okay? When we factor that denominator, we are going to end up with y minus 6 and y minus 3. Two numbers that multiply to 18 are negative 6 and negative 3. Those also add to give us negative 9. Okay? We just left this term and this term the same. Now we need to ask ourselves, what is the lowest common denominator, or what is um, what term can we multiply all of these terms by to eliminate the denominators? Okay, here we would need to multiply by y minus 6 and y minus 3. And on this side, uh, for this equation, we would, sorry, that term, we would have to multiply by y minus 6 and y minus 3 as well and we're going to have to do that same thing to this term over here okay so I haven't shown that over here but we're going to multiply the same thing by y minus 6 and y minus 3 so you're basically multiplying it by the lowest common factor or lowest common denominator when we do that you're going to notice that the y minus 3 cancel out in this equation and we're just left with 9 multiplied by y minus 6 in this term we're going to eliminate the y minus 6 with the y minus 6, and we're left with negative 4 multiplied by y minus 3. And in this term over here, if we multiply it by y minus 6 and y minus 3, these two are eliminated, leaving us just with 18. From there, what we're going to do is we're going to distribute. So I distribute the 9 through to here to get 9y. Uh, 9 multiplied by... 6 should be 36. I think I've skipped the step here. Um, sorry, I found my error. Um, this should be 54. So when you multiply 9 and 6, we end up with negative 54. And we have minus 4 distribute to the y gives us 4y. Negative 4 multiplied by negative 3 gives us 12. And the 18 stays there. Then what we're going to do is we're going to continue simplifying. And when we do that, we combine, combine our y's to get 5y. So we had 9y minus 4y equals 5y. Then we're going to have on this side of the equation 60. Okay, And that's because I had negative 54 here. I'm going to add that to this side. And then I'm going to subtract 12 from both sides. And that leaves me with 60. Okay, so I didn't show all of my work there, but we're just simplifying. Once we simplify to 5y equals 60, obviously we have to divide both sides by 5, and we determine that y equals 12. So if we want, it's a good idea to check our work. So to check, we're going to substitute this y equals 12 in for y here, y here, y, and y. So we get 12 minus 3 in the denominator of the first term, 12 minus 6 in the denominator of the second term, 12 squared minus 9 multiplied by 12 plus 18. Continuing to simplify, we get 9 over 9 minus 4 over 6 equals 18 over 54. And then this simplifies to 3 over 3 minus 2 over 3 equals 1 over 3. So here, this 
subtraction question, we need to find a common denominator, and the lowest common denominator is 3. We convert all those to a fraction over 3 and solve, so we do know that y does in fact equal 12. Okay, then we get into word problems, and these problems are called work uh, problems. So we're given two people in this situation. So we have Stella, and it takes her four hours to paint a room. Now we've got Jose, who takes three hours to paint the same room. If they work together, how long will it take if they uh, like work together? What you might be tempted to do is take four and add it to three, and then divide by... Uh, two, but that's finding an average, which is not the same thing that we want to do, okay? So in order to start it off, what we're going to do is we're going to set up a table. First column is going to be the time it takes the individual to paint. Then the fraction of working for one hour. So the fraction of the work they would be completed in one hour. And then the fraction of the work they would be completed in T hours or any given number of hours. Here we're going to say, uh, identify Stella, Jose, and then what they have together. So for Stella, the time it takes her to paint is going to be four hours. For Jose, the time it takes him to paint is going to be three hours. And we don't know how long it's going to take them, okay? That's the given time. The fraction of working one hour. So if Stella works one hour, that means she is going to be done one quarter of the work. Okay, for Jose, he'll be done one third of the work. And if we combine them together for one hour, after one hour, they would be completed one over T amount of the work. Okay, now to get the fraction of work in T hours, we're just going to take this column here and multiply it by T, the number of hours. We don't know what the number of hours are, so we just take one quarter, multiply it by T, one third multiplied by T, and then 1 over t multiplied by t, the t's cancel out and it just equals 1. Now we have an equation, so we can take Stella's fraction of the work plus Jose's fraction of the work, and that would equal 1. So we set up our equation. 1 over 4t plus 1 over 3t equals 1. And then we have to eliminate this denominator. The lowest common factor here is 12. So if we multiply all the terms by 12, what you're going to see is that here the 12 would reduce with the 4 to give us a 3, 12 would reduce with this 3 to give us a 4, and then 1 multiplied by 12 is 12. So we're left with on this side of the equation 7t equal to 12. So the total time that it would take them is 1 0.71 hours. Now obviously 71 doesn't make sense, so you would want to convert that into minutes and you would find that one hour, 42 minutes is the total time it takes them to complete the room. Okay, if this seems a little bit tricky and a little bit out there, we'll have time to go over some of these questions. Okay, these are the most complex questions from 6.4. I can give you some extra practice, we'll be able to walk through some of these. Um, so there will be time to work on these if this seems a little bit uncertain for you at this point. Okay, the next type of question that you might see is like a distance rate question. Okay, so here we have a train has a scheduled run of 660 kilometers between two cities in Saskatchewan. If the average speed is decreased by 16 kilometers, the run will take one half hour longer. We need to determine the average speed of the train. So what we're going to keep in mind here is that distance equals the rate multiplied by time. Time equals d over t. So we're going to, again, set up a table. So we have trip one and trip two. And then going across the top this time, we're going to separate it into distance, rate, and then time. So for trip one, we're told that the distance it's traveling is 160 kilometers. Okay. That's not going to change for trip two. It's always going to be 160 kilometers. The rate, however, is going to change. So in the first one, we're going to identify the rate as R. Okay. In the second run, it tells us that if the speed is decreased by 16. So we would represent that by R minus 16. So when we set it up, it's going to look like this. We have the distance for both trips is equal to 160. 
and the rate for the first trip is r, whereas the rate for the second trip is r minus 16. Now we need to figure out the time. So this is where this part of the question is going to come in. So the time here is going to be 160 divided by the rate, so it would be equivalent to 160 divided by r. In the second part of the question, we would have the same thing, d over r. This time, d equals 160, and the rate equals r minus 16. So our time for both of those would be given by 160 divided by r, and then 160 divided by r minus 2. Now we want to find out what the average speed of the train is. We know that if the average speed is decreased by 16 kilometers, the run will take one half hour longer. So what that means is that trip two, if we subtract trip one, we should get one half or one half hour. Okay, so then what we're going to do is substitute our values for trip one and trip two into these uh, parts of the expression right there. So we would have 160 over r minus 16 minus 160 over r equal to 1 half. Now we need to eliminate the denominators and solve. Okay, what we're going to multiply this by is r minus 16 multiplied by r multiplied by 2. So again, that lowest common denominator. If we multiply everything in this equation by that, what we're going to be left with is 160 multiplied by r multiplied by 2, because if we multiply this by this first term, the r minus 16 and the r minus 16 will cancel out. That leaves us with 160 multiplied by r multiplied by 2, minus 160 multiplied by 2 multiplied by r minus 16. And then that would equal r minus 16 multiplied by r. When we expand to simplify, we get 320r minus 320r plus 5120 equals r squared minus 16r. Continuing to simplify, we isolate uh, the variables by moving them all to one side. Sorry, so that we can create a quadratic formula. Sorry, a quadratic equation. Oops, from there you would want to use the quadratic formula. Okay, this is very difficult to factor. You can see that we end up with some decimal numbers here. You can't factor that without the quadratic formula. So you substitute your quadratic uh, formula values in. You end up with r equaling negative 31.8 kilometers an hour or 47.8 kilometers per hour. This part here does not make any sense. We don't have a rate of negative 31.8. So the rate that the train is traveling is 47.8 kilometers, okay? So setting up these table for these word problems is going to help you keep your information organized and then also help you solve the problem. So we will go over some questions in class. We'll go over some more practice questions and hopefully after that you feel a little bit more comfortable with the content. See you tomorrow.